Good morning, everybody. Good, good morning, morning, church. Good morning, Amanda. Penny Thorne is ready. She's like, good morning. Wow. Uh, good morning. We are excited to be here uh, today. If you have not met us, uh, my name is Amanda Hardiman. I'm the Director of Communications. And I'm Taylor Davis. I'm your Executive Director. Yes, and we are here for the countdown. So the countdown Ooh. is just a chance for us to connect with you online uh, as you prepare to join us for worship and as we prepare to have worship. So uh, we are excited to connect with you today. Um, so if you would like to... Uh, We'd love for you to uh, connect with us in a couple different ways. So first one, the most important one, is to go to our online bulletin, fmcm.org slash bulletin. And there is as if we're handing you a physical bulletin, lots and lots of things to see. I'm looking at it right now, and all the scoop is there, Amanda. All the scoop. So easy. We have all the scoop. So uh, the most important thing on there, really, well, there's two most important things. If you'd like to make a gift today, <laughs> we would love for you to check that out uh, and click the give button. Uh, but also, they have a connection card on there. And the connection card is a great way for us to uh, know that you are joining us in worship today. So fill out that connection card. Let us know that you are here with us. Uh, if you are uh, watching on Facebook, you can join Vicki and Penny and commenting in the feed. Hello. Oh. Good morning. Vicki is in North Dakota. And Vicky and Penny are helping online? Well, no. Oh, they're watching. They're just watching okay, online. Good. Okay, good. Uh, okay. Vicky, is it so cold there in North Dakota? Hi, Penny. Can you imagine North Dakota right now? Oh, I'd love it. I know. Yeah. Well, I'd be, I'd be a little cold. Who is it we know that is on a cruise in Alaska and they had snow yesterday? Did you, Were you with me when I heard that? No. I heard a friend is in Alaska and they were snow on their tour. So, yeah, snow Texas. Snow in the summer. Yeah. We're about to take a road trip uh, to California, and we're going through all the deserts. And so I'm like, oh, maybe we'll oh. experience some cooler weather. No. no. It's a dry heat from what <laughs> I hear, but it's still Which, a heat. at like 110, it becomes the same. <laughs> Yeah, I, think, I know. Like know, melting is melting. Melting so. is melting, but we're all going to melt. So, uh, you can comment in our Facebook feed if you're watching on our uh, website. Uh, you can comment in that feed. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, and then there's a phone number eight one seven four seven seven six four nine eight. That is our texting service. So, if you want to text us, good morning. If you're watching on a smart TV, if you are traveling in the car, um, anything like that, we would love for you just to say hello. We know how many screens are joining us. Okay, but we don't know who you Keep are. Keep your eyes on the road if you're driving. Yeah, hey, if you're a passenger, you can text us. Amanda. Um, when you hit the connection card and you fill in the info, does that sign you up for our new texting or? or... No, you have to opt into that. Oh, we need to do that. People need to do that because that is very handy. I got a text. Well, we had a lot going on this weekend. So, <laughs> so much going but on. But I got a text, thank goodness, that, you know, I should know all this. But it reminded me of like, oh, this is not open this weekend. Please worship this way and please do this. So it's very useful, that text app. Yes, yes. So it's a great way for you to text us. Uh, but it's a great way for us to send out mass texts. So hopefully uh, you got a text from us this weekend to say we're having family worship. Family worship. Family worship. Uh, so our building, A, um, is a little under the weather little, right now. A little sickly. <laughs> That's what... However many hundred high schoolers will do to a building over a week. It wasn't their fault, though. I know it, just it wasn't was their fault. Tiny. We had so, a little, we had a little plumbing issue that was not related to mission week. But you know what? I was there, and I don't want people. I hate the word plumbing because you think of, I know. it was a clean water pipe break. It was wild. It was those one are great bolt. words to know. Clean water pipe break. Yeah, That's it was happened. because it was a bolt. That like one little, you, you look at the fixtures in a bathroom and a big uh -huh. public bathroom has 10, you know, pipes or whatever. And you look at one <laughs> I bolt. don't think I've ever paid attention to public bathroom <laughs> well, pipes. Start, now start I will. paying attention, <laughs> sister, because that would have knocked you across the <laughs> bathroom wall. Yeah, anyway, water was coming out incredible. They got to it quick, but still had a lot of water damage, but we're... We're pretty much past it. We'll be fine. We'll be fine. By, by it was just, Sunday. that happened Thursday, and yeah. so we couldn't pivot that fast. And so, so what uh, is family worship? Does that mean every child in Mansfield is in our sanctuary? I hope so. <laughs> I, I hope so too. today. Uh, yeah, no, bring your children to worship, basically. Um, bring your children to worship. Bring your students to worship. Our included special needs ministry, come on to worship. Uh, all of that programming that happens in Building A is not happening today, but there's not an excuse not to join us for worship. So if you're getting ready and you're like, oh, I should just go. Uh, come and join us for sure. Yeah. Uh, but also I do know that a lot of people probably are going to just head online. Uh, it's been a busy, busy week. And yeah. so I think staying online is a, is a good choice too. Good morning, Cindy. Cindy Blackbird's oh, Cindy! watching. Uh -huh. Cindy's back. Get it? Cindy's back. Cindy's back. Sorry, Cindy. Cindy, we hope you're doing so, so good. So sorry. Uh, and Allison Shelby's also on. Uh, Hi, Allison. So. Saw her a lot this week. I know. Loved I know. It. So United Mission Week, super successful. Man, uh, so many vans. 20. 20 white vans went out into our community this week. Yeah. And, and the energy here in the building, to see the gym full at breakfast. Oh, my gosh. You had 
you had so many adult volunteers here by 6.15 a.m. Yeah. Doing, uh, you know, because our kitchen's not, like, made to do a thousand breakfast sandwiches in one hour. So they're <laughs> early, and they're doing bacon, and they're doing pancakes, and they're doing oh. art. Art was art. Uh, no. Uh, Donnie Scherter was over there flipping French toast. You just get out of their way. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They you know what they're doing. Way. So anyway, so much activity. All for such a warm, beautiful week. I mean, warm. Oh, yeah. it was but, so warm. But this I, week. I, there were crews. Good morning, Shelby Crow. You have to know this. I mean, we did a lot of changing the United Mission Week plan because of extreme heat. Yeah. But there were many crews that still scraped paint off of a house for two days and then painted it the next day. Yeah, two. yeah. So I saw uh, we returned vans and on the way uh, home, uh, I was looking at pictures and there was a house that we were able to help out somebody yeah. and it was completely redone on the oh, outside, man. just scraped, painted. I I talked uh, to a couple. It's a brand new house. There were there was one team. Um, Chris was one of the leaders, and he was under uh, a mobile house, a mobile oh, wow. home, um, on the last day, doing the final skirting around uh-huh, to, uh-huh. to finish. He's like, "Yeah, I was under." Under on the ground for the last three hours of Mission Week. That's crazy. The g- cool thing dedication. is, too, we had at least two work teams here on our campus. So one work team went out to our back porch and completely redid our oh, picnic tables. So, so good. Uh, washed them all down, repainted them, everything else. And Took then, off the bendy boards yeah. from the heat. Took all the bendy boards off, yes, put new boards on. Very, that was a big problem. And then another team. Uh, so we're going to be doing <laughs> some remodeling of our gym uh, pretty soon. Uh, but one of the rooms that will not be done uh, was our theater room. And so a team went in there yeah. and completely... Uh, Deconstructed the room, Is destroyed that the right? it, destroyed the room. You can say that uh, in a beautiful way, in a very <laughs> detailed and very orderly, g- orderly yes. destruction. Uh, but that room is going to become a sensory room for included special needs in our uh, FFPKR preschool. They're so, so excited! And we they, are so that, excited to be able to do that. Yeah. So they really, really helped out lots and lots of families uh, just by taking a sledgehammer to yeah. different things and taking a week and and. And of course, the, the daytime activity is part of it. The evening worship was sensational. Oh, it was so great. There's it very was so few fun. things that get me more excited than watching young people worship. Oh, yeah. If you yeah. miss out, Beautiful. if you aren't part of that. And so hopefully, Beautiful. some of our young people, who says that? Young people. Uh, some of our young Old people. people. <laughs> I know. Some of our young people should be in worship today, and um, I hope that it is the same kind of energy because it is beautiful. And so, Amanda, we had this weird thing going on with water Thursday night. We had a <laughs> flood over here in <clears throat> Building A. Yes. And many people helping to stop it as worship started over here. As worship starting. Um, the final worship of Mission Week. Mm-hmm. And you had this young man who had come with a friend, who had been coming to church with his friend maybe for a while, and they went in there and they ended up, he he decided to give his life to Christ. Uh Thomas baptized him. So you have living waters, you have a baptism going on while you have flooding waters. And it was... Yeah, it was just beautiful. It was beautiful. It, that was our very first. So we've done a United Mission Week. For, this is our 11th year, our 11th United Mission Week. Um, I thought it was our 10th, but I missed a year somehow. Um, but that this is our very first baptism that came out of United Mission Week. Man. So it was it was so much chaos, but it really, um, and at the time, gosh, uh, just seeing water everywhere in well, Building that, A, uh, yeah. to know that this was happening um, and to go. like People stopped what they were doing and ran into the sanctuary to watch this. Uh, that put everything into perspective. And I think that baptism, too, it, 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 it almost confirms the momentum that's building in our student oh, yes. ministry. Yes, yes. Our student ministry team did an oh, amazing, amazing job with United Mission Week. We're Lots of gonna, opportunities to pivot. Pivot was there I'm like... I just going to say that. Really? We need to change Blake's name to Mr. Pivot. He's like, so unbelievable. Good. He's so good. Not only does he pivot, but he's like, we're going to do a game with Twinkies and ranch dressing. Oh, and gosh. it was awesome. It was just he, so good. Yeah, so, I, so good. I, I can't believe he had... Buckets up there in case something bad happened. He had barf buckets. Oh my god! It was amazing. Nobody barfed. Anyway, and beautiful, it was so beautiful week on campus. Um, that's that's what's great about summer at First Methodist. You go from kids to students, VBC to yeah. United Mission Week. 
So it's so good. So many, and so, like you said, so many people are on campus this week serving, uh, serving our students who are serving the community, also serving the community. Uh, to think about all of these adults who took a week off of work, a week away from their families, to come and uh, to be part of this, uh, volunteering to do that is just. It's overwhelming sometimes to think about just all these adults. It, uh, who it are takes so, great. so many adults to do that. It does. It does. And the adults get sometimes even more out of the week than students yeah. do. So it was so great. Well, so if you served on Mission Week, first of all, you deserve to stay home today. Yes. <laughs> or take a, break, or take a break or buy yourself an extra Starbucks. But don't get too uh, chilled out and relaxed because uh, the um, Boomers and Beyond group, are they mm -hmm. still Boomers and Beyond? Yep. Uh, they were. They met to talk about we name changes. We have not changes. changed the names. Okay. No. So that group, which is basically my group and up, my age and up, uh, has potluck and games July twenty seventh. That's this Wednesday. This is Wednesday. So it's going to be giant fun. Probably uh, it's going to be in the atrium of the sanctuary because we're also the gym is out and the gym's about to be really out for our construction. Yeah. So that'll be cool. Don't miss that. Yeah, potluck so and potluck, games. I, I'm going to be out of town and I'm really sad because I would probably love me a good boomer's potluck. Like there will be stuff made with mayonnaise okay. there. Where will you be on Hardeman Family Adventure by Wednesday the at The Hardeman Grand Adventure. Okay, by 6.30 Wednesday, Wednesday p.m. Uh, we will be in Tucson, Arizona. Okay, so you'll be having killer Mexican food yeah, or some we barbecue. Are Mexican food yeah, restaurant. see, of course you are. You will not miss our little potluck. Although it'll be tremendous, you'll be. It'll be 127 degrees, <laughs> and we're gonna eat hot Mexican food. I can't <laughs> it wait. Makes no sense. But oh, I do love me so some funny. Tucson. Uh, Amy Huffines says good morning, and oh, also if there is a gold star. Where is Diaz, Senorita <laughs> Amy? Oh well, is she in Mexico? She right is. Now? Okay. I don't hey. know if I'm supposed to know that, but she is. Oh, okay, well there we go. Um, Nobody our works harder first than international Amy and Chad. <laughs> joiner, but yes, Amy's whole family was knee deep in water on Thursday uh, after a really wonderful week, but a really hard week uh, for our staff. So uh, really thankful, thankful, thankful for Amy. Uh, and then Linda Moss says good morning. Um, Hi, so. Linda. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. Uh, so, there's one more way to serve, too. Well, not one. We have countless ways to serve all the time. Yes. In fact, if you text us and just say, put me in, uh, we'll find a place for or you to serve. Or info at fmcm.org. Yeah, uh, uh, where can I help or what's going on? Those will get a response. But next Sunday, we will have uh, Carter Blood Care here on our campus in Building D, which is our mission and serving building, which used to be the mission center. Like, you'll know it. You'll see it. Uh, it's there. So if you want to go to our online bulletin, uh, there are still spots available for you to sign up to give blood, which is a great opportunity to give back to our community as nice. well. Nice. So. I felt like I gave blood Thursday night, but that's <laughs> probably not right. Same -sies, but um, it's okay. Um, I'm just looking at the activity. So you caught you covered a lot of good. Do you think we'll be? Well, I, well, I bet we will. We'll we'll let everybody know about uh, worship next week. I bet we'll be back. In we'll be back. We'll have a plan a. B. Yeah. But. but Family worship. I'm really excited. So cool. I went last night, and it was easy peasy. You know, like, um, it just, it's a look, you know, if you took your kids to the other door, and, and and I told a couple of families, like, hey, we're doing family worship. We had a little flood over there. And there's, I one. was expecting, like, what? And they were like, oh, great, okay. And in the sanctuary, they went. Yeah, so, I'm really beautiful. excited. Uh, my son will be sitting with me this morning. Ooh, so, uh, okay. And I text our whole small group. And I'm like, let's make this a party. Let's just all have our kids Dex together. probably will have some sermon critiques for Jan. Yes, I think so. And Pastor Jan's giving the message today. So yeah, yeah, it's super, good. It's good, super, too. And uh, you will get to see our Mission Week recap video, which... Yeah, it's fun. It's so good. I'm so excited uh, for that. So, yes, bring your children to Worship Day. Uh, if you are joining us online, get your kids. Have them come sit with you, too. One last um, check. Who's, who's anybody, anybody new or anybody commenting how fantastic we look this morning? Nobody has told us that we look good Come today. on, church. I think it's not about us. <laughs> I know, but I got a fancy shirt out this you morning. Do. I've, I've worn golf shirts for a month now, so. Well, and I uh, have a sleeveless dress on, but it's cool uh, it's, inside the church, and goodness. so I had to go look for a jacket that I probably won't wear again. Yeah. Ever, because it's always going to be hot here. Yeah. I just feel like it's always going to be hot. Do you take a jacket just in case the room is cold? Yeah, always. Yeah. So always Sally, movie theater. Sally I always wear that. jeans. Yeah, in a movie oh, theater. Okay. I don't bring a blanket because I will fall asleep if that happens. There's a you know, big chance I'll fall asleep anyway. But a blanket, that's a guarantee. I will fall asleep if that happens. That's good. So. Well, there's one more box here since, uh, for prayer request on our uh, FMCM bulletin. So please always let us know. Yes, we would love to how pray we for can you. pray for you. We have an incredible prayer team. We have an incredible care 
care team that will come see you or pray with you. Yes, so, absolutely. So um, uh, just know that your church is always thinking and praying for you. We have such a great pastoral staff, too. Pastor Sharon does a great job with our oh, care man. ministry. And so yeah. if you are in need of care, uh, we have such a big congregation, big community, that's hard for us to know your needs. And so never feel selfish or like you're bothering us uh, if you let us know what you need. So if you need prayer, please, 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 you can email us, and we'll forward that on to Pastor Sharon. But again, on the bulletin, it has, um, how can we pray for you? So you can fill that out. It will automatically go to Pastor Sharon and her team. Uh, we would love to care for you. Um, that's what being a church is all about. Love it. Amanda, I think it's nine. It's time for worship, you guys. Let's uh, go. Thank you for joining us. We'll be back here next week, except neither of us. Well, Taylor, you'll be back next week. I'm right? here. I'm here, baby. I'll be in Tucson. Yeah. Or somewhere else. Have a great worship, now. everyone. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Bye, y'all. Hello, my name is Logan DeGroat, and I want to welcome you to worship here at First Methodist Mansfield. If this is your first time in worship with us, we want to extend a warm welcome to you as well. Before worship begins, there are three things I would love for you to know. First, we want to connect with you. So whether you're worshiping online or here in our sanctuary, I want to invite you to fill out our connection card. You can find that card several different ways. The easiest way is by going to our online bulletin at fmcm.org slash bulletin. You can also text the word CONNECT to this number you see on the screen. Or you can simply scan the QR code located on the back of the pew in front of you, and it will take you right to the online bulletin. Second, we want to help you take your next step on your faith journey. If you are interested in becoming a member of First Methodist Mansfield, please stop by our connecting point located outside of the worship space or text the word JOIN to the number on the bottom of our screen. Our connecting point is a great place to stop by and ask any questions you may have or find ways to get plugged in to the life and ministry here at First Methodist Mansfield. Lastly, if you're interested in making a gift today, you can do so by visiting one of our drop boxes located outside of the worship space or by going to our online bulletin at fmcm.org slash bulletin. Our mission is to make immature disciples of Jesus Christ who love God, love others, and serve the world. For more information about First Methodist Mansfield, feel free to visit our website at firstmethodistmansfield.org. Follow us on social media, download our FMCM app, or text FMCM to 817-477-6498 to stay up to date with everything happening here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to uh, 930 Worship. My name is uh, Dylan. I'm one of the worship leaders here if we haven't met before. Uh, I gotta say, it is so nice uh, to see everybody and their families and their kiddos. Um, as you know, we've got two little ones. They're actually they're actually not here. Uh, they're they're at at the uh, Pawpaws. Uh, but it just does does our hearts some good to just see the integration of of, of adults and, and, and children and, and babies. And, and I just feel like that's such a powerful thing. This just feels like such a powerful space this morning. And so I want to invite you to just claim that uh, for for parents of little babies. Uh, we get it. Like man, if if my if Henry was here, he would be just losing his daggum mind. I mean, so don't feel like there's any type of oh, you know, like this is a safe space, uh, and I want you to just claim that this morning. This is a family space um, to worship God, and so uh, let's claim that together. I want to invite you to stand uh, with us as we get ready to worship. But, but I'm going to pray for us before we get rolling. So let's pray together. Lord Jesus, thank you for this morning. Uh, Thank you for, uh, for the breath in our lungs. God, it is a gift that we are here together 
as a body of believers here to share life together, uh, to sing together. And so, Lord, we just ask that you would open our mouths to sing your praise. Lord, whatever might be blocking or hindering us from truly lifting our voices this morning, we ask that you would remove that. Whether it's shame or guilt or performance, past mistakes, Lord, would you just remove that from our hearts and from our minds and help us to raise our voices to you because you deserve it. Because if nothing else, you deserve our highest praise, our loudest praise. And just like when a child sings to their parent, Lord, you love it. Even if it's out of tune, off beat, voice cracks, Lord, you love our voices and you love when we sing to you. Lord, open our mouths to sing your praise. Open our hearts to express our love to you because you loved us first, God. We love you so much. And it is in your name that we pray these things. Everyone said, amen. Amen. Let's sing. You, my God, have saved my soul. I am yours forevermore. I won't be moved of this, I'm sure. You my God and you save my soul We sing I was lost I was lost when you came for me Held in chains by the enemy But you broke them in victory Now I'm free I am free, you're my joy, and you are my hope. I am saved by your grace alone. I will sing of your love for me. I am free, I am free. Lift it up. You, my God, I've saved my soul. I am yours forevermore. I won't be moved of this, I'm sure. Save my soul. We sing. Now I stand with the King of Kings. He has paid for my every sin. And from now through eternity, I am free. I am free. Oh, you, my God, have saved my soul.
You sound beautiful. You guys may be seated. Hey, man, how beautiful. Uh, what psalm was that? Can somebody tell me? I know you know it. Psalm 139, right? Is that right, Dylan? Yes. Psalm 139? Yes. Sorry. Yes. Well, uh, my name is Sharon. I'm one of the pastors here. Um, and what, what a great day. Family worship. It's so good to hear the kids' voices. We're all in here together. Uh, God can bring us together in, in such amazing ways. Uh, so I, I love hearing um, the voices as we're singing and throughout the service to hear the kids' voices. It's just really beautiful. Um, you know, this has been an exciting week. And that several records were set, one of those being, I think, that the average temperature for United Mission Week uh, was 108. So uh, let's, let's give God praise for all the work of our students and, vol and our volunteers. Um, that was amazing. We're, we're going to see in just a moment after our prayer a recap of the week. Uh, so I know you'll love to see that. Pastor Jan has a really amazing message to share with us today from Ephesians 5. So we have a lot to look forward to. And as we go to God in prayer, I, I want to invite you to look at the slide. You'll see there uh, all the ways that you can give. Uh, for those of you uh, worshiping online, uh, you'll see the information there. Also here in the sanctuary, there's a QR code right in front of you in the pew that you can use. Uh, United Mission Week is a great example of how our giving blesses people, blesses our community, blesses students and volunteers, uh, your gifts made that possible. And so we, we give you thanks and we give God thanks for that today. As we go to God in prayer, will you bow with me? Gracious God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Lord, we invite you to lead us into a deep, connection with you today. Lord, as we breathe in this morning, help us to remember the inexhaustible capacity you have to restore our souls and to forgive our sins. And as we take that breath, that breath out, as we release it, Lord. Help us to remember that through the cross of Jesus Christ, you heal our brokenness. So Lord, we're so thankful. We're so thankful for these gifts. You are such a good God, and we praise you today. And Lord, we also think of those um, near and far away who are suffering today. Lord, we, we pray for them now. And we have confidence that you're already working in their situation to bring healing and hope and blessing. And we thank you for that. Lord, as, as we learn, as we strive to follow Jesus, we want to understand more about this life, this walk that Jesus modeled for us. And so right now as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, we, we invite you to reveal to us, to speak to us, to show us how we might walk with Jesus more closely. Hear us now as we pray together. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
Mission Week to me is pretty much just family because a lot of the people that I'm doing Mission Week this year, I've done it with them since middle school and they've become some of my best friends in the world. And it really opens your eyes to a community that you might not always see. And it's pretty much just a bunch of people serving God and serving others, which is all about what our church is about. It's been good to watch these kids who go throughout the summer and can do anything they want to sacrifice their time and come out in probably, what, 108 degree temperature average and sacrifice and serve the community. That's what it's all about. Because even with this heat, as hot as it's been and drenched in sweat, they've still got a light in their eyes and a smile and you, you just see the, that reflection of Jesus and everything they do and that's been, that's been cool. My favorite part's probably been the fact that I've been able to help people and have fun while doing help, helping people. Well, I would tell someone that whenever you do it, it's not really about getting anything back. It's mostly just what you give to people in the world. This is what living looks like. This is what freedom feels like. This is what heaven sounds like. We praise you. We pray. Come on, you say This is what... It's hard work, but it's rewarding. You have that aspect of um, seeing what you're able to create or breaking something down, building it back up, and you're seeing how it's, uh, how it's brand new. It looks a lot better. I feel like it's brought me closer to God because that's what um, Jesus did. He went to places and he built them up. I've always grown up in the church, but it wasn't really until I started like coming to Mission Week where I was really just like put in to like the Lord's work and doing the Lord's work. It just completely changed the way my relationship with God and my relationship with myself. I just like overall honestly happiness and who I am as a person. Wow, can we just really celebrate what God is doing here at First Methodist Mansfield and shining the light of Christ out in the community. What an amazing, great week, United Mission Week. So we are continuing our summer journey to Ephesus through the book of Ephesians. We started on May 29th. We're going to finish up on August 14th. So we're exactly two-thirds of the way through our tour and I hope that you have enjoyed this deep dive into the Word of God as much as I have. And if I haven't met you yet, my name is Jan. 
Jan Davis, and I'm one of the pastors here on staff at First Methodist Mansfield. We welcome those in the sanctuary. We welcome those online. And we welcome our children and youth into the sanctuary today. We're so glad you're here. So glad you're here. If you haven't heard, we had a flood over in Building A. A plumbing problem happened the last day of a mission week. And Building A is where our children and our youth go on Sunday morning. So we're going to get it fixed up as quickly as possible. But we thought, what a great opportunity to worship as a family of all ages. So welcome to our families that are here together. And it reminded me that, you know, we're going through the book of Ephesians. We're talking about the ancient town of Ephesus and these early Christians. And they all worship together. They didn't have a children's department to go to. They didn't have a student ministries department. They were all together. I think for the majority of Christianity, families worshiped together. Probably in the late 19th century, mostly the 20th century, that was a new invention to separate out children and youth. In the ancient town of Ephesus, these were house churches. People met in homes, and they brought their entire family with them, and they would have been together with all ages, worshiping God, breaking bread, singing songs together, and um, caring for one another's family. It would have been a beautiful time of celebration of the Christian family, and they would have been reading Paul's letter to them, which we're going to read today. So we are in Ephesians chapter 5 now, and if you would open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5, if you have your Bible today, that's wonderful. If you forgot your Bible, you're welcome to use the ones in the back of the pew or your Bible app. And if you don't have a Bible and you would like a Bible, we would love to give you your own Bible. And if you email pastordavid at fmcm.org, uh, we'll get you your very own Bible, or if you're here in the sanctuary, if you stop at Connecting Point, uh, they'll give you a Bible there. So Ephesians chapter 5. Now Paul, Paul loves the Ephesians dearly. He spent three years with them um, planting churches in Ephesus, and now he's in prison in Rome, and he's writing them this letter. And it, it's a love letter to them. And it's also, a, it's a love letter to us. It's Paul's love letter for us. Because Paul wants the very best for us and for them. Paul knows that if we follow the advice in this letter, that we will find joy in life, that we'll grow in maturity in our faith, that we'll grow strong, that we will live well and we will pour into the next generation. And that's what Paul wants for us. So chapter 5 is about Christian conduct, and Paul's encouragement to them and to us is that we can live a holy life, and they, the Ephesians, were surrounded. They were living in a very immoral, pagan culture, and they were surrounded by that culture. They were immersed in it, and they also came out of it so that their friends and their Probably some of their family members were still part of that culture. So Paul's encouragement to them and to us is that we can live holy lives in an unholy world. Now, the book of Ephesians has a lot to say about walking, especially Ephesians chapter 4 and 5, walking. Eight times the word walk is used. It's called in Greek, peripateo. So my theme today is walking. So I'm going to do some, some walking around here. I, I've been here one year now. I have my one-year anniversary as one of the pastors here. Thank you. Got a little applause for that. Thank you. It's been a wonderful year. But, um, and I've preached a few times since I've been here. And one of the comments I got as a preacher is that they said, Jan, you don't move around much when you preach. You kind of stay in one spot. And I realized that at the church I formerly served, they didn't have the technology, the nice cameras that we have that can move around. So they, they literally, they told me I had to stand in one spot for the camera. And there was, there was actually a box, like a, they put tape on the chancel, and they said, don't move out of that box, because the camera will, you will not be seen on the camera. 
So I think I just got accustomed to preaching in one spot. So I've been told that our cameras will follow me around. I've never tested them on this, but I'm just going to start walking around and see how much they can, if they can keep up with me. Oh, wow, they're doing really good job. Guys, that's impressive. So I'm going to walk around a lot today because we all understand walking, what it means to walk, peripateo. And what chapter four and five are teaching us is how to walk, how to walk in relationship with other people in our life. Ephesians teaches us how to walk in our marriage, how to walk in our homes, how to walk in our community, how to walk in our workplace. This is how we walk. In chapter four, which we finished last week, Ephesians says that we are to walk worthy of the calling that God has put on our lives. It says we are to walk humbly, gently, and patiently. It says, chapter 4 says we're to walk with long-suffering and forbearance, bearing with one another in love. It says we are to not walk in falsehood or anger or bitterness, but we are to walk in forgiveness. That's how we're to walk. So now we get to chapter 5. And I have, I'm going to give you four ways that Paul tells us we're to walk that are in chapter 5. Number one, we're to walk in the way of love. Let's go to chapter 5 now, verses 1 and 2. And I'll read that for us. Ephesians 5, 1. Follow God's example, therefore as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Walk in the way of love. Now, the Greek word, peripateo, can be translated as walk or live. So depending on what translation of the Bible you're reading from today, you might, it might say walk and might say live. Neither are wrong or right, but the one I'm reading from says walk. So I'm just curious. I'm going to take a poll. Uh, look at your Ephesians 5 verse 2, and some of you, it'll say walk in the way of love, and others will use the word live, live a life of love. So um, how many uh, versions say walk? See some hands. Okay, how many ver versions say live? Okay, about maybe two-thirds are using walk today. Two-thirds are walk. So I'm just going to tell you, as we're going through these different um, instructions on walking, I'm going to be using translations that use the word walk. So if yours says live, just substitute walk for it just for today because our theme is all about walking, right? Now, uh, Pastor Julian last week, uh, he preaches our Saturday night service. He also talked a lot about the, the word parapotato in his sermon for walking in chapter four. Um, but I heard, and, and I listened to his sermon, he, he used the word parapotato so much, but everybody thought he was saying parapotato. And people were like, why is Julian talking about potatoes tonight? But he's really saying parapotato. And so I thought I better put it on the screen so we don't confuse ourselves with pairing potatoes today. It's parapotato, P-E-R-I, P-A-T-E-O, per epiteo. So peripateo means to walk, to make one's way, to progress. But it's more than walking physically. It's about life walking. This is our conduct in life. It's our behavior. And we are to walk in the way of love, number one. Number two, we are to walk as children of light. Let's look at Ephesians 5, go to verse 8, 8 through 10. Paul says, For at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of light is found in all that is good and right and true, and try to discern what is pleasing to the Lord. Walk as children of light. So God is light. And the, there, his first, God's first creative act 
in Genesis chapter 1, verse 3, was to bring light into the world. God spoke the world into creation, and God spoke and said, let there be light. And there was light. God is light. And Jesus Christ is the light of the world. And because of Jesus, those, all of us who are lost in darkness, we are all start off lost in darkness because of the original sin of Adam and Eve and separation from God. We are lost in darkness because of the light of Christ that comes into our world and finds us in the darkness and touches us with the light of the world. Because of Jesus, we can be redeemed and saved and we become light. We're brought into the light. We're brought home to God. In John chapter 1, verse 5, it says, The light, Jesus Christ, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will not overcome it. And those who believe in Jesus Christ are called children of light. We are children of light, and we are to shine our light, not hide it under a bushel. No, we're to shine our light in the darkness. And one person, if you know, if you're in a really dark room, pitch black room, and you turn on a light, even the light of your cell phone, you know how it illuminates so much. It brings so much into light. One person in this world can make a difference bringing light to dark places. We are to be bright beacons out in the world. We're to be the lighthouses shining bright. Now, Paul, in most of his letters, contrasts darkness and light. And Paul says darkness is, uh, represents ignorance and doubt and error and sin. And light represents truth and wisdom, it represents righteousness and life. Darkness is separation from God. Light is union with God. In Ephesians 5, 8, look at it again. Look at it carefully. Verse 8, for at one time you were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. I think this is very interesting. It's not saying that we were merely at one time in the darkness. It says we were darkness. We were darkness. And it doesn't say that now we are merely in the light. It says we are light. We've become light because of Christ. When we are touched by Christ, we are changed and transformed. We become light. And Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. But in Matthew 5, 14, what does he say? He says, you are the light of the world. Because of Christ, we become light. And as the light of Christ shines on us and we are changed and transformed, it is true that when we shine our light out in the dark world, we can change and transform situations because of the light of Christ in us. All we need to do is shine. 19th century American evangelist D.L. Moody said, we are told to let our light shine. And if it does, we won't need to tell anybody it does. Lighthouses don't fire cannons to call attention to their shining. They just shine. So shine. Shine on. And we saw a lot of shining going on this week. We were shining the light in lots of dark corners. United Mission Week, 76 middle school students, 68 high school students, over 100 volunteers, 25 special needs participants from our included ministry, seven volunteers serving, no, I'm sorry, 17 volunteers serving our included ministry, all out in the community in 20 different teams, in triple digit heat, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, you see those vans rolling out of here in the morning, packed with our students going out. I mean, it, it made me choke up. It brought tears to my eyes. It gave me chills. We're sending the light out into the darkness. And what a difference it makes. And this year we had one baptism. One young man said he wanted to give his life to Jesus Christ and was baptized here on Thursday night. Shine in the light. So number one, 
walk in the way of love. Number two, walk as children of the light. And number three, Paul says, walk carefully. Ephesians 5, verse 15 and 16. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of the time because the days are evil. It says we're to walk, to be very careful, to watch carefully how we walk. Make the most of every opportunity when we walk. Make the best use of our time when we walk. There's like this sense of urgency, like uh, shoppers that want to snatch up a bargain before it's too late. Once um, several of us were in the office talking, and I was looking, we were looking for those, you know, in the spring, I love to get those big Boston ferns and hang them on my porch. Mine's dead now, unfortunately. But I was wanting that in the spring, and I couldn't find them, and they were really expensive. And somebody in the office said, well, go to this, go to this store. I don't remember which one. Go to this store, and they have them. There aren't that many, so you better get there. And they're really a good price. And so, like, four of us, we just dropped what we were doing. We just ran to the store and got these Boston ferns so that we snatched them up. And, and that's what God wants us to do, to make the most of every opportunity. Don't let anything pass you by. An opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, the opportunity to pour love into to somebody else, the opportunity to encourage somebody. Take the, make the most of every opportunity. A Colossians 4, 5, Paul says something similar. He says, walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Now, he's encouraging the Ephesians to be careful how they walk for two different reasons. One is because they are small in number, they're new Christians, they're vulnerable, they're living in a very immoral society, surrounded by uh, immorality. And so there's temptation there, and Paul says, be careful. But the other reason is that um, they need to be good witnesses in the world, they need to, um, have their conduct, their behavior, their love that they're demonstrating is a witness to who Jesus Christ is. So Paul says, be careful how you walk. And it's the same for us. We need to be careful how we walk. I brought, a, brought an illustration today. Because when we're walking in the world, we have an opportunity to influence other people. And every moment of every day, you are going to influence somebody. You're going to influence them either for the positive or the negative. And so the word influence uh, comes from influere, which is a Latin word. Influere, that's where the word influence comes from. You got two words today, two vocabulary words, one from Greek, one from Latin. Say, so just say, Jan taught us a lot of vocabulary today. We can all go in jeopardy and win. Okay, influere. Influere means to flow into and means to fill up, like filling up a vessel, pouring into. And whatever is being poured into our minds, our bodies, our spirits, our heart. It's influencing everything. So we need to think about what is influencing us. Let's look at Ephesians 5 now, 17 to 18. It says, therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. I think this is a very clever comparison that Paul gives us here. He says, you know, when we are filled with wine, we're under the influence of alcohol. But when we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, we are under the influence of God. And so he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Now, if somebody is driving their car and they are drunk, they are in extreme danger to themselves and to others. Drunk driving is against the law. And when they're pulled over by a police officer and they are inebriated, they are charged with what? A DUI. 
driving under the influence. Well, Paul's saying, do not get do not get charged with a DUI. What I think Paul is saying, get charged with a WUI, walking under the influence. That's number four. Paul says we are to walk, number four, under the influence. Influenced by the Holy Spirit. We're to go through life influenced, filled with the Holy Spirit. Because if we are not filled with God, we're going to be filled with something else. If we're not influenced by the Spirit of God, we're going to be influenced by something else. So we got to decide how we're going to walk. And I don't know about you, but I personally hope that I get pulled over for a WUI. And I hope you get pulled over too, because I want people to see that the Spirit of God is what fills me. I want people to know that the Spirit of God is what influences me. Okay, I'm going to give a shout out this morning to our very awesome officer, police officer, Officer John Godwin. He was out there this morning. He's out. He's here all the time. You probably know Officer Godwin. I mean, he protects. He serves. He keeps us safe. He's here on Sunday mornings. He's here on so many evenings. And I'm just, he's going to be on the lookout for you today. He's going to see, are you walking under the influence? And I hope he pulls you over and gives you a W-U-I, that you're walking under the influence of God. Ephesians 5.18, it says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. In this, the way Paul says filled with the Spirit, it's we're influenced and we're continually filled. We're constantly full of the Spirit. It's an all-the-time filling, again and again and again. One time I went to lunch at a local restaurant with a few friends. It's a place that we went to very often. And that day there was a new employee there. He was a new server, young man. And it was obviously his first day on the job. And he was very eager. He was very excited to, to, to do a good job. He was trying, was very diligent, trying to do everything. Well, the owner, manager of the restaurant, it was lunch hour. She was busy. She was handling lots of things. And she didn't have much time to, to train the young man. But I could tell she gave him one very important task. And she said, make sure that everyone in this restaurant keep their water glasses full. And he took that job very seriously. Because my friends and I, as soon as we would just put a few sips, we would drink a few sips. Ah, that's very nice, actually. We would drink a few sips of water. He was right there, ready to fill us up again. And we would take just another little tiny sip. And he was there again, filling up, and he would fill it up to the very tippy top of the top of the glass. He was doing a good job. And that's what the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life. He wants to keep you continually full, full, full of God, up to the very tippy top, even overflowing with the Spirit. The Holy Spirit keeps us full. Just like a, if you think about an oil lamp, it needs oil in order to for the, the flame, for the flame to shine. And when those, our lamps, Jesus said, keep your lamps full. When your lamp is full, it's going to shine bright. And there is no chance that it's going to go out or it's going to get dim. We're walking under the influence. Another thought about influence is when we are full and influenced by God's Holy Spirit, we have the opportunity to influence others. We have an opportunity to pour ourselves into the lives of somebody else. So who are you pouring yourself into? Who are you influencing? Your, your children, your grandchildren, your, your family members. Who are you pouring yourself into your, your friends, your neighbors, your coworkers, your employees? Who are you pouring yourself into and influencing every day? Because it makes all the difference. We saw a lot of pouring out this week at Mission Week. Adults are pouring into students and students then going out and pouring into people in the community. 
volunteers pouring into our special needs community, and they just poured themselves out, loving others and serving. And I see all the time at this church, people pouring into our children in the children's ministry, and people pouring into uh, our care chaplains, pouring into the lives of those who are, are homebound or hospitalized or grieving. And so many of our members pouring into the hungry in our community and serving. So I just say, keep pouring. Keep pouring yourselves out because if you just, if you start feeling like you're not full anymore, the Holy Spirit's just waiting to fill you up. All we need to do is be ready for God's Spirit. So how then, how then are we to walk? Number one, walk in the way of love. Number two, walk as children of the light. Walk carefully and walk under the influence, striving for a W-U-I. My closing, just one last thought, just one last thought on walking. Walking has another understanding to it. Walking, we process. Walking uh, means that we are making progress toward a goal. We are walking somewhere. We have a destination in mind. We are pressing on to reach that destination. And so I think our encouragement today is to walk as Paul walked. He was full of passion, just burning, consumed with burning passion, not wasting any moment to share the love of Christ, to serve in the name of Jesus Christ, to tell the truth of the gospel of Christ. So Paul, he shines, and, and he pours, and he walks. And not only does he walk, he runs. He runs. 1 Corinthians 9, 26. Paul says, I do not run like someone running aimlessly. And Philippians 3.14 says, I press on. I run towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. So let's run like Paul. Walk, run, press on. You only have one life to live. So run. Let's pray. Come, Holy Spirit, we open ourselves this morning. We just ask you to fill us full. Fill us to the brim. Fill us to overflowing. Pour your love and joy and peace and thanksgiving into us. And send us out in the world, shining as light so that we can pour ourselves out and pour ourselves in to others. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I just wanted to finish out what it says there. Verse 18, be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So I just want us to kind of get in that posture with this last song. If you go ahead and stand up. Making melody to the Lord. A beautiful sound. Lift your voice and sing. What a gift of grace is Jesus, my Redeemer. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy. My righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is only bound to Oh, how strange and divine I can see.
future sure the price that has been paid for Jesus lived and suffered for my part it means grace how good it has been to worship together and as you prepare to go out I this is my prayer for you that as you go out you you walk in love and you share love where love isn't known and you encounter love from others and that you walk as children of light and you carry that light into places where light is not known, but that you also encounter light from others, and that you walk carefully, and that you walk under the influence of the Holy Spirit, and that you share that influence with others. It overflows out of you into places where grace is needed. So as you go, walk and go in peace.